Welcome to the Crossing Church Weekly Sermon Podcast. For more information about this podcast and other resources, visit our website at thecrossing.cc. Good morning, Crossing Church. We'd like to welcome you all online watching. So no matter where you are, we would just encourage you to lift your hands and your voices to the Lord this morning. Amen. Sing this with me, Heaven Thunder. Every morning, rising like the dawn, God of all creation, the wonder of it all. You're the song of freedom, you're the only way. Every new beginning is by grace. Oh, I've been alive in Jesus, into a life of freedom. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Savior, you can sit the panic, 
You can break the chains You're the only healer The greatest ever name And through the cross forgiven Everything has changed Every new beginning is by grace Oh, I feel alive in Jesus Into a life of freedom is risen up from the grave you raised me out of the darkness save me hallelujah jesus savior come on we declare this this morning worthy 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 you're the only name we're singing holy Holy to you the highest praise Worthy, worthy You're the only name we're singing Holy, holy To you the highest praise Oh, I've been alive in Jesus Into a life of freedom Hallelujah Christ is risen Up from the grave you raised me Out of the darkness, amen your voice in worship. Jesus, you are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to worship. When the night comes, when my strength fades, my soul
reminded me this morning of Paul's words in Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, where he says, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication. And then he says this, with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Bring your requests to the Lord, and in return, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. And I know that in situations like this, in, in weird seasons like this, Expressing thankfulness can be really hard. When it's so easy to be anxious, when there's so many voices telling us what we should be afraid of and what we should be concerned about, and thankfulness might be the last thing at the bottom of our list that we want to be. But we have an opportunity this morning. We have an opportunity to come before the Lord and to show thankfulness through our prayer and through our worship because thankfulness is reflecting on all of the things that he is and all of the things that he has done and declaring them over this situation because he hasn't changed. The same God that was strong enough last year, the same God that was strong enough last month, it's the same God who is strong enough right here and right now in this very minute in this very minute. So I wanna invite you as we sing this chorus again that while we're waiting, that we're going to praise, I wanna invite you to begin to open up your mouth and declare the goodness of the Lord, to declare the faithfulness of of the Lord, to declare the strength of the Lord, to declare the dependency of the Lord when everything else is changing. Would you open your mouth and begin to thank Him? Would you open your mouth and begin to exchange your anxiousness for the peace that surpasses every understanding? God, we trust you. We trust you as much in this moment as we did before. Father, we lean on your goodness this morning. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. You never change. You stay the same when the tides are turning. You stay the same when the earth is shaking. I will praise you while I'm waiting for a miracle. I will see, I will see while I'm waiting for a miracle. I will praise you, I will praise you while I'm waiting for a miracle. I will see. Yes, I will see while I'm waiting for a miracle. I will praise you. I will praise you while I'm waiting for a miracle. I will see. Yes, I will see. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just bless your name right now, Jesus. We thank you, God, and we lift you high in this place today, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. Miracle work, 
promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here touching every heart i worship you yeah. i worship you you are here turning lives around i worship you i worship you you are here turning lives around Jesus, we say, way make miracle work, promise keeper, lying in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We may not understand it, but we just sing this out and say, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop, that's the truth, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Yeah. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. No, you never stop.
maker this morning. He's a way maker this morning. Hallelujah. When things are dark, it just shines the light on who he is. He is the way maker this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to greet you this morning here from the Crossing Church on behalf of Pastor Andy and Pastor Stacy and all the Crossing staff to our first totally virtual service here. And we want to say welcome to you this morning. Come on, let's welcome this morning. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You know, because of the unprecedented circumstances and because of we, we wanted to follow and respect our local authorities and our governing church, Gateway Church up in South Lake, we've decided to take this measure of having this virtual service and, and being privileged to come into your home this morning and present this time of worship and prayer together. Amen? Amen. We want you to keep informed. We're going to be taking this, because of the fluidity of this situation, we're going to be informing you uh, week by week about what's going to happen as we move forward. So keep your eyes on our all of our social media we're going to be our website, Facebook, all of our social outlets, and we'll be keeping you informed. Amen? Now, I just want to say, we've, I thank God for our president who has proclaimed a national day of prayer today. And so we want to come to the Lord during this time. You know, I just want to give you some confidence. Nothing catches God off guard. There's provision in God's word for every situation, including this one. As a matter of fact, I thank God for this opportunity because when there is a national or indeed a worldwide a crisis that is going on, it gives us an opportunity as a whole nation or as the global community to focus our eyes and our heart on him who is more than able. Amen? Amen. In the word of God, it says in, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people called by my name will pray, will seek God, that God will hear from heaven. He'll forgive our sin and heal our land. Amen? We've got an opportunity to pray. So I want to lead us in prayer this morning before we, we move forward in our service and we go to our video announcements. But I want to just lead us in prayer to our great God who will hear us and he will heal us. Amen? Heavenly Father, in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, we come to you, Lord, with assurance and with faith. Lord, we thank you for the promise that you have made. You having foreseen situations like this, God, and making a way through your awesome power, Father, through your glorious, Lord, uh, power that you pour out, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you would move and across this globe today, that you will begin to heal people, Lord, that you will absolutely go to the root of this virus, Lord, and destroy it, mercilessly destroy it, Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your strength and wisdom for all of the, 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 the medical uh, people that are working, God, to bring uh, healing and answers. We ask you, Lord, for prayer for our, our government and all of the people, Lord, that are working, Lord, to help those that are being affected by this, Lord, so critically. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we humble our heart. And we declare that we are dependent on you. We look to you and to you alone in Jesus' name for the answer. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a clap this morning. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. We're going to go to our video announcements now. Good morning and welcome to The Crossing. We are so glad you're here. We believe that freedom is found when we are connected together in community, growing in faith. That's why we have life groups. There are all kinds of life groups available, something everyone can enjoy. Head on over to our website where you can see all the groups available this spring. 
One of our missions here at The Crossing is that you would be equipped to go and make a difference in our community. One of the ways you can do this is by serving at one of our three services this Easter. We are having a Serve Team Rally Thursday, April 2nd, and we would love to see you there. So find the registration on the front page of our website and sign up. There's lots of exciting things going on here at The Crossing, like our Parents' Night Out on March 27th. To find out more about this event and other things going on, head on over to our website where you can sign up for our weekly email update. To keep up with us on the go, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Julian, and please join me in welcoming our senior pastor, Pastor Andrew. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you all. All 15 of you, thank you so much. <laughs> we are joining you guys all this morning. Uh, we've got some of our staff and elders and some, some folks that are, just a handful of folks that have that gathered here in the auditorium and we're, we're joining you in your living room. And so uh, we welcome you here. There's a great spirit actually here. I think we could take over the planet from here. And uh, so anyway, just, just these, uh, again, unprecedented circumstances have just, just created some, some uh, some, some new opportunities for us. And uh, this morning, I was praying about this service uh, as I was coming out of the bunker with my AR-15 guarding my toilet paper <laughs> and uh, eating my beef jerky. I, I, I think we have discovered, you know, when uh, the Antichrist takes over the world and the announcement is made, the first thought that's going to co- go through people's mind is, toilet paper! <laughs> We've got to have toilet paper. I, I think when this is all over here in the next couple of weeks, there'll be some social science done to try to figure out what is the correlation between fear and toilet paper, because I don't understand it. But uh, anyway, it's, it's great to, to be here, and we're going to be continuing on in our series, Jesus Walks, because uh, nobody we need to know more about than Jesus. And so uh, we're excited about that. And gang, again, just stay tuned as we move further into the weeks to come. We'll be communicating with you and cooperating with all the local uh, government officials just to demonstrate this is what the love of Jesus looks like and this is what cooperation looks like. So uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're excited. And we're excited to be here in this room. Uh, I've, I've got a message And uh, the message is called Overcoming the Spirit of Defeat. Overcoming the Spirit of Defeat. Now, when I say spirit in church, that can mean a lot of things. And so uh, a couple of things. When I say the spirit of defeat, it can mean an actual demonic spirit, and and it it could mean that. Or it could mean your spirit, my spirit's infected with defeat, and when I say defeat, it just means there's, you, you, you start to get hopeless and you begin to feel like you're just defeated and it starts to impede your ability to move forward. I'll explain it a little more, a little more as we get into the message. But another, I could have called this the atmosphere, overcoming the atmosphere of defeat. Because things can happen in everybody, all of our lives, in our marriages, in our, our business, in our callings. We go through seasons where the, the planets align, the right personalities come into our life, the right circumstances happen, and all of a sudden, we begin to sense an invitation to just quit, just like, it's, it's just not worth it, I, I can't go on. And in praying about this, uh, this week, just trying to get direction, I keep coming back to this spirit of defeat. Just, just, you're not done, but it feels like you're done. And there's things that get up in the atmosphere that start to contribute to that. And um, of all things that we've, we've recognized, and when we talk about atmosphere, and that's really what I wanna talk about today, when we talk about atmosphere, uh, it has to do with, in people, in people groups, it has to be a lot of times with unspoken agreement. We, we, we're agreeing on something, whether it's true or not. And uh, when we agree, and what you're seeing right now, just throughout our nation and all of this rush to make sure we have water and toilet paper and all of this, there's an unspoken atmosphere of fear, and all of our hearts are, are being enticed to agree with it. And uh, you, you just, please hear me again, and this is not to shame anybody struggling with fear, 
But there, there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Absolutely nothing to be afraid of. The fear is creating more of a challenge than the coronavirus. Uh, my doctor, uh, Dr. Perkinson, the, my doctor sent some information out and it was some of the best information. Had you all been here, I would have shown that to you that 80% of the folks that get this virus are gonna be fine. I mean, not even gonna go to the hospital. They're gonna be fine, just rest and all of that, 80%. About 14% will need to go to the hospital. And then 2.1% here in America who have already got compromised systems, could, could, it could be fatal. But most of us, if you even got the virus, you're gonna be fine. And uh, I just want to encourage you with that and uh, uh, so, so that we can understand what we're really wrestling with in, in the moment we're in right now is just a lot of fear. And so I want to, I want to help you with that. There's an atmosphere afoot, and uh, anytime you believe a lie, you empower the liar over you, and you succumb to that. When you believe the truth, you surrender to, succumb to the truth teller, and that's what rules over you. And we as believers, we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, and that he has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit, though. He's given us a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. So anyway, I, I want to get into a, a passage of Scripture and talk about these, these atmospheres. Atmospheres. Now, does everybody, I hope, hope everybody is is understanding this. I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> we, our staff, uh, a lot of our staff, every Tuesday for the last number of years, we review the service that we had the weekend before. So we can have a service, and uh, man, the, 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 the message is good, the, hopefully. The uh, worship is good. You know, things go, you know, 95% of it will be done real well, but we have a review for the sake of pursuing excellence. We'll have a review on Tuesday mornings, and the questions are these. Uh, what went right, what went wrong, what was missing, and what was unclear? We, we just run those because we're looking for, are, are we dropping the balls? Is there a way we could make this service better for everybody? And so kind of the internal workings of that is we do this review. We've had times when... We've had a great service. We'll have a great weekend service, and we'll say what went right, and man, people were saved, and man, the presence of God was powerful, and this happened, and this happened. It'll be a great review. And then we'll get to the part of what went wrong or what was unclear, and we can start to talk about those things, and uh, by the time we leave the meeting, it'll feel like a defeat because of because the atmosphere in the room. We can talk ourselves out of a victory because it just seems like it's easier to self-criticize and to almost accept self-defeat, like that's what we're hunting for. We're hunting for what's wrong with us. And a part of what creates atmosphere is this. What are you looking for? What are you hunting for? When I watch the news anchors, I was watching, in fact, I'm just gonna encourage you, turn, turn, turn the news off. I would almost challenge you, take a week off and see if you don't feel better. I was watching these news anchors describe the, the virus, and there's facts. We need the facts. But the, the, the expressions on their face, this one lady's face is just indelibly in my mind because it was so, there was just so much, what she was saying didn't fit the amount of alarm on her face. Her face was just screaming, panic, go get toilet paper. It was just screaming, we're all gonna die. And watching all of these news anchors, what they were doing was creating, we call it in church life, actually culture. That's what culture is. It's, it's the agreed upon atmosphere. Whether we say it or not, we feel like we're winning. We feel like we're losing. And it has a whole lot to do with what we're hunting for, what we value. And when you unspeakingly value hunting down what's wrong with you, how many of you know if you look for it, you will find it? And if you spike the football as if you've had a victory, like we found something wrong, yay, oh, you feel very defeated. The spirit of defeat comes into marriages when you're hunting for what's wrong. Those of you that are married, how many of you know when you get agitated, it's never happened in 30 years between Stacy and I, but I hear, <laughs> when you get agitated with your spouse, you tend to start hunting for well, you know, and they said this too, and they did that too. And once you start that hunt, 
something happens in the atmosphere and it gets very unsafe. And you have an atmosphere of defeat because at that point, your marriage stops growing. It can't move anywhere. And honestly, it's the two of you that need to come to peace and stop hunting for what's wrong. If you hunt for it, you're gonna find it. If you're suspicious, somebody's getting away with something here and I'm gonna find it. You're gonna, that's gonna get up in the air and it's just, it's, it's an atmosphere. So anyway, I, does that, I hope that makes, I can't see you nodding your head, yes or no, I just have our staff here and our, some of some great folks here, but I'm hoping you're nodding your head, okay, I'm getting it. And uh, some of you just got real quiet. One of the spouses, I just saw you, you got up and walked out of the room because you're mad at him. <laughs> ah, see, we're getting somewhere. All right, so atmospheres, let's talk about it. Matthew 5, 21. Another scene with Jesus here. 21 actually starts with Jairus. Uh, this father comes to Jesus and says, God, Jesus, my daughter is deathly sick. Please come and heal her. And so Jesus says, I'm on my way. How many of you know, when, I mean, nothing will get your attention like one of your kids sick. A, a mother, some of the sweetest, precious women on the planet, when their child is sick, they will grab a doctor by the throat and, and threaten him. It's just, it's, so this dad, man, he's desperate. My daughter is sick and I need you, Jesus, come right now. So Jesus takes off, verse 24, and I'm gonna read a little bit of this that y'all are sitting in your living rooms. We can read a Bible story together. It says, and Jesus went with him, verse 24, and all the people followed crowding around him and a woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them but she had gotten no better. <clears throat> in fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe, for she thought to herself, and if you write in your Bibles, I would encourage you, write that down, thought to herself. If I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. <clears throat> she could feel in her body that she, could, she had been healed of this terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him, so he turned around into the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see what, what had been done. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and told him what she had done. And he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. I also want to just help you in, um, thank you, in your Bible study. I see that this water is only half full. Did you drink all the rest of that? <laughs> We're supposed to be practicing, you know, self-quarantine and all that. Sorry. It's too late now. I do want you, when you, uh, something caught my attention in here, so this is just, since we've, we're a little looser today, uh, I kept trying to think, why was the woman so afraid? What was she afraid of? Here's Jesus. He's healing people. There's crowds around. What is she afraid of? I want you to write that down. Anytime you're looking in your Bible and something catches you a little weird, just write yourself a little note. Why so afraid? And come back and think about it. I'm going to get to it here in a second. There's some great thought in it. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There is no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said, don't be afraid, just have faith. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James, and John. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw such commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? This child isn't dead, she's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him, but he made them all leave, underline that. And he took the girl's father and mother and three of his disciples into the room where the girl was lying. Holding her hand, he said to her, Talitha Kaum, which means, little girl, get up. And the girl, who was 12 years old, immediately stood up, walked around. Uh, they were overwhelmed, totally amazed. She gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened and told them to give her something to eat. 
Talitha Kaum. I uh, got caught by that word. I don't know why I walked around saying that word, Talitha Kaum. It sounds like uh, something from The Lion King. Uh, but I, 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 little girl, get up. And uh, I, I believe there's some folks that are watching me right now. There's some precious women. And when I said that, you heard the voice of your father because this word's for you. Little girl, get up. Talitha Kaum. Get up. All right, well, I, I chose this passage, and I, I uh, had first determined to talk about atmospheres because I wanted to talk about Jairus because, quite honestly, because Jesus walked into a, a funeral, messed the whole thing up, but he got the atmosphere right so he could raise this woman. Anyway, that's where my mind was. But this, this other woman who had had this issue for 12 years, she's right in the middle of the story, and I couldn't figure out how to separate them, so... We're going to keep them together. There's some similarities in the two women and uh, some things that we can draw on this. Again, we're overcoming the atmosphere, the spirit of defeat. It's what our nation is feeling and wrestling with right now. And some of us on personal levels, we're dealing with a spirit of defeat. And the very first thing I want to say is these trials, these pressures that try to pressure this sense, these trials expose our genuine level of faith. Trials expose our genuine level of faith. And uh, this, this scare that we've had here, and again, this is not to shame anybody or that, that's, that's gotten scared, but uh, it's easy to be full of faith and talk like, hey, man, God is so awesome, and I'm full of faith, and I'm a man of God, and all. It's easy to talk like that and even believe it when things are good and we're not under trials. But when, when the heat comes, When a pressure comes, when you're in a desperate place, your daughter's sick unto death, the doctors have told you, we've done all we can do for you, there's nothing else we can do. Moments like this, when when we we say, hey, a virus, it's coming through, love it or hate it, it's gonna come on through, and uh, we've gotta be careful. When that happens, the real genuineness of our faith gets exposed. All of us, all of us, this is just humankind. We project a level of spirituality that's a little beyond where we really are. And, and you know, and it's good. And, and honestly, you're more pleasant to be around if you're being a little more positive than a little more negative. So keep it up. But the point is, when pressure comes, uh, who, who you really are and what you really believe gets forced up and you have to go, wow, I thought I believed here. But when the pressure's on, again, when you see all this panic in our nation, I, I, I'm not sure I would have predicted the amount of panic in these United States of America that we've seen over this virus. But here's the deal. When pressures come, they, they expose, wait a minute, where are we really? And I say that because the very first thing that we have to do to deal with an atmosphere of defeat, the first thing we have to do is quit faking. We're, we're further along than we are and uh, really define, where am I really? Where where am I really? We gotta get right down and dirty, genuine and raw. One of the the things, and this is, you know, when you've done this for a long time, uh, one of our our core values here at The Crossing for all of you, for all of our leaders, and it's it's simple, it just says, be real. Just be real. And uh, the reason that we we say that is because it, you know, once you've confessed, this is really who I'm at. This is really where I'm at, God. Now you can actually start to progress and get something fixed. And right. in, right. in our, our Western church culture, uh, just like peer pressure is a thing out in school and everywhere else, we have a peer pressure within church life to kind of project, you know, a spirituality. And some of us are so committed to our image of spirituality that we would rather die then admit, I've, I've got some genuine weakness. And it can begin to be a pressure against us that keeps you trapped because there is a bunch of pressures. Just, it's our culture. And one of the things that we, we, we strive for here, we're pursuing, is to create an atmosphere. And that's why you hear me confess sin right down to, I try to confess as much as I can. I want you to know you have permission to be right where you are and to be who you are. And honestly... Without that approach to God, you can't fix much if you don't admit, you know, you know, when you go in the mall, there's usually a little 
map up there and there's a little red dot and it says, you are here. And if you've never been to that mall before and you can't see where you're at, you're gonna wander all over looking for shoes and now you can't find it. So th this is that moment where you go, I'm here. Th th this is where I'm at. Give you an example here. Again, we're talking about how do you break the spirit of defeat? You, you first, you gotta, you gotta look it right dead in the eyeball and, and say to God, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. Um, th this week, okay, so I'm gonna get a little vulnerable with you. This week, I I've had a, a strange wrestling match that I I've honestly never dealt with. You know, I've been tempted by it, but I I've never dealt with it like this. It's not sexual sin. I've not slept around on my wife. I know some of you are disappointed, but uh, it's not nearly that exciting. Uh, uh, not newsworthy. Uh, I don't wanna give you all the details, but honestly, there's an insecurity that got infected. I'll say it that way, an insecurity. And uh, honestly, I, I started hearing a lot of pastors and churches talk about the great things they were doing and normally I would say, praise God, that's great, man, look what the kingdom's doing. It hit me wrong. You ever been in a situation where just something catches you wrong and you go, well, good for them, hallelujah, you know, thanks a lot, God. And uh, man, and I just, I, I keep hearing it. Then I hear other people celebrating what other pastors are doing. And I'm thinking, well, okay. I, I start acting like a big baby, but it's re it was real. And uh, so this week I'm trying to subdue this thing and I'm, uh, it, here's what you need to know. When trials and pressures come, I'm not gonna fall off, uh, but I'm trying to get into your living room because I want you to hear this. When, when trial and pressure and things come, we get vulnerable and all of us have insecurity. Every human's got insecurities. The key is just trying to keep them subdued and not let them get infected, but they are entry points. They're entry points for another spirit, the, the, the spirit of darkness, to start building a case against God in your mind. Pressure comes on, Satan, I mean, Satan, Satan asked Adam and Eve, so where's your God? I mean, what kind of God withholds that, you know, do you know God doesn't want you to be as smart as him? That's why he doesn't want you to eat from this particular tree? Uh, when Jesus was being tempted by Satan, he basically said, so you're the son of God? You look like you're gonna starve to death, my God. Uh, if you're the son of God, what kind of father do you have that would let you be out here in the desert starving to death? He's always trying to build a case against God. And over this week, I start honestly feeling defeated because I'm starting to compare myself with some situations. And how many of you know you can always compare to somebody doing more and, and if you compare up, you're gonna feel bad. So the key is compare down and you'll feel superior. <laughs> no. no, the Bible says don't compare. So I got this little subtle thing going on inside of me and I'm wrestling and I'm feeling a little like, here's, here's what's going through my head, what's the point? Just quit. Now, I'm not quitting. I'm just telling you, these are the wrestling matches. What's the point? I start to interpret different facial expressions and things. I start to interpret it like, you know, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm at the end. Maybe it's, oh, I'm done. The bigger deal that's going on, though, is on my insides, I've got an offense starting to build with God. Okay? So, I come here this morning and I start to pray like the professional I am. Because I know, and it sounds like, and it's early in the morning, it's just me, and I'm trying to impress God with how spiritual I am because he is so impressed when I pray a certain way. So I'm walking around, and perhaps you've known this situation. I've got a topic out here, it's an elephant in the room, that I'm not talking about. I'm a little miffed at God because by, by, by this morning, I'm thinking, why hasn't this moved faster? Why didn't you do this? And, and I'm, here's what I'm thinking. You've let me down. I've given my whole life to this. But you know, toss me a little something. You know, and this sounds like a big old baby, and I was being a big old baby. I'm just telling you, when you get something in your head, 
it, it takes you a little bit to get a hold of it. And if you don't get a hold of that argument against God, defeat. It, it starts to say, what's the point? Just quit. Somebody else can do this better than you anyway. Just, you know what? I was a little slow this week, and for whatever reason. So I'm, I'm walking around saying, Lord, this is the day you've made, and God, I just thank you for this. And I'm quoting scripture, and all the time I feel like he's going, are we going to? Okay, fantastic. So impressed, Randy. Uh, are we going to actually talk? And I, I just get frustrated and sit down. And I told him, you know what? It, I feel like you've let me down. I just feel like you've let me down. And, uh, and I just said, and, and I confessed what is very embarrassing. It's just so embarrassing to think that I would have any weird jealousy or just, it's embarrassing. So I didn't want to talk to him about it. Now I'm telling the whole world. So <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this to, to help you know everybody's got their weeks. I'm certainly nothing special. I just got caught, man, I got caught weird and it got to me and this argument started. And th what I'm telling you is this is how an atmosphere, I mean, I'm gonna get to it in a second, but the first atmosphere you've got to deal with is the one going on in you. What's happening in you? The beauty of a pressure time like this, whether it be a virus, something in your marriage, the thing you want to look for is what's that argument that's starting to build against God? Because there's your danger point. That'll tell you where your insecurity is and where you're vulnerable. And it'll tell you where the atmosphere on the inside of you is going to get all toxic. And by the way, every one of you, everybody in here, everybody goes through this. Just, if, it, if it's not this week, it's next week. It's going to happen. So here's, here's, here's uh, did a funeral this week in and, uh, Hebrews 11. I can't remember where the, what, what, what verse it was, but it, it's talking about Sarah. I think I, I wrote it down regarding this case. Hebrews 11, verse 11, says, By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. She bore a child when she was just past, uh, when she was past the age because, here, here's the judgment, she judged him God, she judged him faithful who had promised. She made a judgment in her inner courtroom, he's faithful. He's faithful. She didn't build an argument against him. She built an argument for him. <clears throat> Inside you and me, there's an internal atmosphere happening right now, it's happening in all of us. You're either building a case for his faithfulness where you're living out of, even though these circumstances stink, I judge him faithful. That's my judgment. By the way, everybody in here, you're standing in judgment of God right where you sit. Right now, everybody has a judgment on God. And it's one of two things. He's either faithful or he is not. Pressure times help us. I, I, I don't think Jesus was angry when he a, a, a thousand times said, where's your faith? Where's your faith? The guys would get in a storm or get in a, 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 a tough situation. He'd go, guys, where's your faith? I think he was trying to help them get to the point I'm trying to help you get to, which is, look, it's in there, but quit faking it. Right. Quit acting like you're more spiritual than you are. It works against you, and then you gotta keep that image up, and when you really need help, sometimes our pride gets in there, and you'd rather die than confess. I'd rather die than forgive that person. I'd rather die than do the right thing. And you get stuck, and you really do get defeated. I believe this helps us get down to that. James tells us this, and I don't like James. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna tell him, I don't like you. I don't like you. But when he says, count it all joy when you encounter various trials. For the trying of your faith or the testing of your faith, it produces endurance. And if endurance has its way, it'll make you perfect. Now, when you're down, all of us do this. I don't know, find another scripture. When you're down and somebody who's good and comes to you and tries to encourage you and they say, brother, just count it all joy, punch them right in the mouth. 
just square it upright in the mouth. That's kind of what I want to do with James. It's like, James, hey, check this out. Shut up. I want to hear it. <clears throat> what he's trying to say, though, is, look, God is trying to raise to the surface something that's in you. And the circumstance, you won't do it any other way. It's got to be pressured up and out. And here's the thing. All the stuff that God is producing in your life and in mine, it's got one road. I wish I could tell you different. It, ha it goes through endurance. Ugh, I'm, I hate that I even have to say. You're gonna ha it, it gets pressured out. Rarely is it just gifted to you. It, it's, you learn over time. When you're saying, God, make me an oak tree, you know what he gives you? An acorn. You pray for an oak tree, he gives you an acorn and says, let's start stewarding right here. And you're thinking, this is gonna take forever. And he's like, endurance. For you to be what you really wanna be, it's not just gifted to you. I'm gonna see how you steward a little bitty thing. And it's gonna get a little bigger, and it's gonna get a little bigger. You pray for an oak tree, give you an acorn, and then we'll work together to bring it Bring it up. You see that? It's going to take endurance. So anyway, so atmosphere is everything. I, I, I do gardens, I, tomato gardens. Atmosphere is everything. How anything grows, it's all about atmosphere. I, I don't, I've said this before. I don't really grow tomatoes. I buy tomato plants. I tend to the atmosphere. If the atmosphere is healthy, they just grow themselves. In marriage, your marriage, my marriage, all it is is an atmosphere. How you're experiencing marriage, it's an atmosphere. It feels a certain way. And either it's got a growing atmosphere or a choking atmosphere. And usually, if you, you know, when you're married a long time, a lot of both, depending on what week it is and what you're going through. You know what I'm saying. So you're gonna go through both of those things. But all of life is an atmosphere and you're trying to get somewhere. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get back to that. Let's get to some more of this. We could take three hours on this sermon, by the way, so we got time. All right. She judged him faithful. Be real. So that point was actually, uh, well, here's the second point. Take responsibility for the atmosphere in you. Take responsibility. Everybody say the word responsibility. Mm, don't like it much more than I like James, but take responsibility for the atmosphere that's going on inside of you it has everything to do with what's going on around you. Now, I say this, um, th this, this woman uh, that reached out and touched Jesus to get healed, she had a desperate, there was, she was in a desperate place and uh, defeated, the woman was defeated. The doctor tells you, nothing else I can do for you. Nothing I can do for you. She had a choice at that point to go, Man, the doctor says, I'm, I'm toast. Um, she had something else working against her in the atmosphere. This is why she was afraid. Took me a little while to look at it and catch it, but here's why she was afraid. She was afraid when she touched Jesus' garment because she had broken the law of Moses and was liable for death. Because of the flow of blood, she was commanded to stay outside the camp not touch or be touched, and everywhere she went, she was supposed to say, unclean, unclean, cursed, don't touch me. She reached a point on her insides where she said, you know what, hell or high water, I'm down to my last, you know, I got one, I got one pitch left, I'm swinging for the fence, I got, this is my, Jesus is coming by, so I'm gonna break the law, I'm gonna defy the doctors, I'm gonna defy the atmosphere, but I'm gonna get to Jesus. I'm gonna do it. When I say take, take responsibility for what's on the inside, sometimes you gotta break, you know, we get so used to asking everybody around us, our friends permission for how quickly we can grow or what it is we can do. Sometimes you outgrow your friends, your friend group, but you're still asking permission in your mind you know, to, to do whatever it is. This woman stopped looking for somebody to tell her what she could do. And she got desperate enough to go, I, I'm not gonna be defeated. Oh, heck no, that is not, not me. And sometimes that has to, 
that thing has to rise up in you. I gave you a testimony last week of a woman whose son was, was dead on the table, had been dead, brain, no brain oxygen for one hour. And this mother came into this room where these doctors were, grabbed his feet and said, God, your word says... The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And if that is true, and it is, you raised my son from the dead. And the nurse said, I've got a pulse. And 16 days later, that boy walked out. That's, that's that thing right there. That's that. You know what? I'm tired of asking everybody's permission. I'm tired of being polite. My friend group has a level of faith, and I have let it keep me at a certain level, and I feel defeated. I am not asking your permission. I'm not asking the law's permission. Church protocols, I'm at a desperate place where I'm gonna charge through and get to Jesus, hell or hot water. I remember the one time, the one and only time I've ever had an instant miracle in my hand. Absolute instant miracle. My son Tyler was a baby. And again, when you have, all you parents of first child, your first child, you are crazy. You're just nuts. Uh, you get better with, you know, when, you're, when you have your second child, you loosen up and you say, hey, baby, catch this. But with your first one, you're all whatever. And we didn't know what we were doing. And so everything was new. Tyler was sick and had a fever. I mean, up over 100. His head was super hot as a babe, just crying. And every sympathy in me was screaming. And I remember going in my bedroom with him on my head and he's just sick and throwing up and his head is hot. And I reached one of these moments where it's like, I ain't praying no nice prayer and I'm tired of trying to act all churchy about this. I, I just like that woman. God, I am coming through. I don't care who's in the crowd or who has an appointment. Jairus at least had an appointment. She didn't have an appointment. She just kicked right in the door. Hello, coming through. And it was one of those moments where I'm holding him and I'm praying and it didn't, oh, dear Lord Jesus, if it be thou will, wouldest thou? It was not, no protocol whatsoever. It was, this is your child and your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, he's healed. And if that's true, you're liable to heal my son. I mean, I don't even know if it was biblically or theologically accurate. I just know I was in that spot where it's like, your word is true and this boy needs it and this is my baby boy. Now let's move. And it's not that I was commanding God. I was commanding all the atoms around me. Line up with the word of God and I, have, I will not take no for an answer. Right. Yeah. I'm not losing on this one. Yeah. And I'm telling you, in the second, his head is hot in my hand right there. And in the same second, his head went cool. I felt him do this. Right. And he fell asleep and that boy was healed yeah, right. just like that. There's a time where you've got to kind of break all of the, I need to ask all my friends permission about just what I can, how spiritual I can be. Sometimes you need to, you've outgrown your friends. Just outgrown them. And uh, you don't have to dislike them. Sometimes for you to get out of the defeated feeling that you're in, you gotta get away from your defeated friends. I just, I'm so I'll give that to you just, however, Sometimes you just got to say, God, I, I won't be denied on this. Your word says it, and I, I am standing on this, Amen. and I'm not asking anyone's permission. I don't need permission. This woman was liable. That's why when, when, when after she touched him, Jesus said, hey, girl, hey, don't sweat it. Your faith, your tenacity has made you whole. I didn't even see you coming, and you got your healing, right? So sometimes you got to get up, go get your healing. Speak to yourself the word of God. This is what this woman did. I told you to underline this. It says, some of your scripture says she spoke or she said, and other parts of scripture say she thought to herself. The point is there was a conversation going on inside of her. She was dealing with her own atmosphere, the atmosphere in here. How many of you know it's, that's the most complicated one? All these thinking cycles, all these case buildings, all this you know, who am I and all, it gets crazy in there. That's why you have to get the word of God that isn't crazy and call a peace to this storm on the inside, this atmosphere, get a hold of it. And it says she thought to herself. And so I wanna encourage you with this word. Uh, sometimes I drive around in my car and I'm speaking to myself. 
I drive in my car because no one will think I'm crazy because you know people do all kinds of crazy stuff in their car. They probably think I'm yelling at them. There's times where I have to speak to, to my own soul. David said, why so downcast, oh my soul? You put your hope in God. Right. What was he doing? He was speaking, speaking to his own heart. This woman was saying, I, I, here's what I know. If I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And she began to roll that around on, on her own internal atmosphere. And she got a hold of her own atmosphere. So step number one for, well, this is about step number four, actually. But part of this is, is speaking the word of God. Sometimes I listen to worship. Sometimes I come in here and sing just as loud as I can. But what I'm trying to do is get a hold of the storm on the inside and get it calmed and get the atmosphere on the inside corrected. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. When I'm feeling defeat, and by the way, this is every week I go to war with this. Isaiah 61, just write that down. I speak over myself. The spirit of the living God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is now me, Pastor Randy. When the enemy comes to go, you can't preach. What are you doing leading this? Why don't you just quit? I have to fight this more than you would know. When that comes, I go right here and go, nope, spirit of the living God is upon me. This morning when I prayed, when I got right here and I got just down and dirty, honest, raw with God, as soon as I finished, and here's what I would counsel you, don't just complain to God and walk out like a spoiled brat. You, you, you say, this is really where I'm at, and then hush. Just be still. As soon as I got through, done this morning, I, the first thing I heard was out of Romans 8, nothing can separate you from my love, Randy. Nothing will ever separate you from my love. And the gift and the calling of God, it's still just as powerful. Little bit. Randy, the deal is still on. My spirit is upon you. The, everything I ever said about you. And I felt like a spoiled brat while he's saying this. But at the same time, it's like, I'm sorry to ask for reassurance, Lord. But sometimes I just need it. Right. And so do you. Right. So, all right. Lastly, we address the atmosphere inside of us. Lastly, we would address the atmosphere around us, getting rid of that spirit of defeat around us. Uh, Jesus, when he came, that I read earlier, when he left the woman and he headed to heal this, this uh, 12-year-old girl, uh, he walked into this funeral and all of these people are, are crying and playing sad music and basically, Jesus comes into the funeral and says, everybody out, get out of here. What he was doing was he was chasing all of the people who carry the spirit of defeat out of the room. Get rid of them. Out. And, and, and once they were out, he took mom and dad and he took three of his disciples who they could come together in agreement. And then Jesus said, Talitha Kaum. Little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. Sometimes the word to you is reach down for some extra and get in there and touch Jesus. Sometimes you're at a place of defeat that's so bad. I mean, you're toasty. I mean, you're done. I quit. Jesus has to come to you. And here's the great news. When you're so defeated, when you're so defeated, the last thing I want you to hear in this word is to feel like, Pastor, I'm so defeated. And here you are saying, come on, just give it some more. And it's causing you to feel even more defeated. Yeah, great news for you. Sometimes your job's to press through, but sometimes you are so dead in the water, you need to know, can he get to me? And here's the answer. Absolutely, he sure can. He sure can. I love, there's another little side note, I love that Jesus leaves one woman who's scared to death because she's broken the law. She reached up and touched Jesus, she broke the law. You know what Jesus just did? He broke the law. I feel like he was saying to the woman behind him, hey, so that you don't feel afraid, I'll just join you. Here's a dead corpse here and I'm a Jewish rabbi. Dear Lord, it was against Mosaic law to touch a corpse. 
Here's what he constantly was trying to teach people. The law was given, but all of the law and the prophets hinge on two other laws, loving God and loving people. And anytime your rules inhibit loving God or loving people, there's something wrong with the way you've interpreted the rule. And here's what loving people looks like. It isn't about obeying the Mosaic law. It's about saying this girl is dead. Think about it. This is a 12-year-old. This represents potential, what could have been, what might have been, what we wish would have, all of that. There's some folks in here, you've died too early. You died too early. There's still plenty. There's still plenty of time. But the spirit of defeat has caused you to come into agreement with it, and you've conceded with it. Again, when you agree with a lie, you empower the liar. You surrender to the liar. When you agree with God, you empower him. And so really, all we're needing to do is shift our agreement. That's why the Bible says we're two or more agree. You know what? Our, our planet got an atmosphere about it right now because we all, I say we all, the planet got an agreement that we should all be scared, and so we're all, everybody's acting scared. It, it, nothing factual is driving the fear. It's just underlying agreement. Well, here's, here's the most powerful thing you can get in agreement with. The Bible says we're two or more would agree as touching. Anything they ask would be done, and here's the principle. When we get ourselves in agreement with God, bar the door, nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. That spirit of defeat comes to entice you to get you in agreement with itself so that your productivity will stop. So, sometimes, sometimes you have a person or a personality in your life that carries your spirit of defeat, a person or a personality. In church life, I've had this over the years. I've had multiple people that are just somewhat uniquely gifted at making me want to jump off of a bridge. <laughs> I just, and here's what I've learned. Most of them are, are innocent. They, in, they don't know they're having this, impact on you. Some of you have a mother or a father, and th they, they constrict. H here's how you know. Your life is all about growth, right? Here's the acorn, here's the, here's the uh, oak tree, and your life is on this continuum. The atmosphere is either, either promoting this way or reminding you of what you were and the remnants of what is still there. You're either hunting for, for who you're becoming or you're hunting for why you're not gonna get there. And the people in your life, by their facial expressions, by their words, by their implied little innuendos, they, they, they drop things in the atmosphere that are either trying to tell you you'll never be that, or you got those friends that you feel like, I could run through a wall, I've got a friend named Orlando Juarez, Most, many of you would know Orlando. You get around Orlando, and I promise you, he doesn't do anything but point this direction. Look at where we're going. That's why Paul said, forget what lies behind, press forward to what lies ahead. Go that way. But the spirit of defeat is carried sometimes by personalities of people in your life. You could, it could be wife or husband, right? Some, some people you can get rid of, just, I, I won't suggest anything. I'm just Sometimes you can just self-distance, self-quarantine from, uh, from uh, you know, certain people. Uh, I've had people in the church just, all cards on the table that I've just prayed them out. I've had people that I've taken to dinner to say, you can't come to church here. Um, you know, you gotta figure out how, what it's gonna take. But there's most of the people, honestly, that carry the spirit of defeat toward you, you can't get rid of them. It, you, again, you, 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 you could be, um, I, I, I feel like I'm talking to a lot of people who have adult parents, and you're an adult, and sometimes a parent won't let you outlive what you were. Man, you're 20 years up the road, but anytime you're around them, you feel that you, dis, you, you don't have my permission to grow, and they just speak to you as if you're, what, 12. And they're, in a, they're innocent, you know? You can't just leave your mother. Uh, you can get counsel, but you can't just leave. So some people use self-distance the second group, though, uh, probably most of us are this way. I'm bringing the plane down, I promise. You, 
you've got to, and I'll say it this way, you've got to deal with the spirit and the person, okay? You deal graciously with the, with the person. You deal ruthlessly with the spirit, okay? When they carry that defeating thing, you don't get angry at the person. In fact, here's what the scripture says. I'll give you some, give you some things here. Uh, I say to you, Jesus talking, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. This is where, and I'll just, so let me just give you an example. When I've had people in, our, in my life I will pray in private and renounce the spirit that they carry that creates that sense of defeat. I hope this is making sense. Just, you, know, you get around them and all of a sudden you start backing down from who you are. You start second guessing. They have a way of infecting that insecurity. That person, uh, and again, sometimes marriages get infected and you, you gotta figure it out. But I do this, and I learned this from some hard-headed guys that were in the church 20 years ago that none of y'all know, but Lord. So anyway, they're no longer here. Hallelujah. Everybody's a blessing. Someone they come, someone they go. Everybody's a blessing. So, but I, but here's what I did. I learned to love the people and pray blessing on them. God, I bless them. Bless their family, bless their finances. When I'm speaking blessing over somebody that's carrying this, it, dis, it disempowers them in my mind. It's... And I renounce the spirit because I recognize there's a spirit behind it. And I am talking now a, de a demonic spirit, spirit. I'm talking about a spirit that they're carrying that is trying to minister my defeat. So I am gracious with the person. Lord, bless them. And I renounce and speak a merciless attack on the spirit that's come to try to steal the call of God off my life. I will not concede and as long as I have to pray that, and many times those people have left, but if this is family, this is mom, dad, husband, wife, all that, we, we gotta pray together and renounce that spirit while being gracious with the person, all right? So it can get a little complicated. Anyway, gang, say all that, just to say, probably a lot of other things I could coach you to do. One would be prophesy. Prophesy means, again, where you've been, where you're going. Prophesy where you're going. Make room in the atmosphere for where you're going. Uh, there's always gonna be remnants of where you've come from. Look, don't look, at where you're, don't look at where you're at right now. Look at where you're going. The scripture says, without vision, people cast off restraint. They just quit or they just surrender to the spirit of defeat. But with vision, you look to the future, which means you resist, you, you, you do restrain yourself and you keep moving forward. So look forward and begin to prophesy the future you're headed for. Some of your marriages are dead in the water right now. You need to begin to speak the future. I'll tell you something Stacy and I do. I, I don't even know if she knows that I do this. I think she knows I do this. When Sometimes when we have sour times, we're, we're, okay, this, I promise the last thing and we can go. But she and I, our marriage is built a lot of times around the church and church stuff and a lot of church information. We get a, a deluge of what's wrong, what could go wrong, what's broken in people's lives, and, and it's our joy to carry this calling. When we get home, sometimes we can continue to rehearse what could go wrong, what might be wrong, what might somebody think, be thinking wrong at the church. I mean, it, it, and so one of the things that, that I do when I need to just break the looking at what, what could be wrong with right now, I can't take it, she can't take it. You know what I want to do? I'll, I'll, I'll just start, I'll just start, in fact, this last week. Let's talk about vacation. Where are we going to go for a vacation? Talk about Disney. Let's talk about some great hotel. I, that's not terribly spiritual, but here's what I'm doing. Vision. Where are we going? Let's get our head off of where our feet are at. Let's look where we're going. Where am I going? And I'm telling you, sometimes you can break something in marriage where you're in a sour spot, it's because you're looking at your feet. Pick your head up. Jesus said, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Look at where you're going. Anyway, I think enough said. I want to pray for two types of people today as we, we conclude. 
And uh, again, just stay tuned with us throughout the week. We'll be communicating with you about the weekend services. But uh, I think there's two kinds of people, and there's, there's some folks that have enough energy and spunk that honestly you need to take responsibility for your healing and your own war right now. You're more than a conqueror, so get to conquering. You need to take uh, responsibility for your internal atmosphere and reach out and touch Jesus right now, and you're going to. I got confidence in you. There's another group that you are so defeated. You just need to know, man, is there hope for me? And here's, here's the answer. That little baby girl was dead. It was over. And Jesus came to her. Wherever spot you're in, you can overcome the spirit of defeat. Either spot you're in. So I want to pray for you. We'll call it a day. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we reckon with the atmospheres that are imposing themselves over this planet right now. And we're seeing the vulnerabilities of humankind. And in some ways, it's exciting because it lets us know there's opportunity, great opportunity. The heart of man is still sheepish and still wanting a, a, a shepherd. Scared sheep, that's what this creation is. And it's become obvious yet again. And you're the great shepherd. So Lord Jesus, let your church and let you, God, be exalted as the great shepherd and I pray, Lord, you would make a great witness of your church on this planet during this very season and during this time. I pray that in Jesus' name. And thank you for the reminder. As well, Lord, there's some people, Lord, that are fighting a spirit of defeat in their marriage, their finances, their business, their life, their emotional world, their spiritual world. And the enemy is creating a case against you and they're being enticed to agree with it. And today, your word has come to rescue them and the fighter has been reawakened. And the lie that they've agreed with, they've now disagreed and now they're agreeing and empowering the truth giver and that is you. So I pray for those today that need to reach through and say just, Jesus, I will not be denied. I am who you say I am. I will have what you say I can have and I will do what you say I can do. I won't be denied. And I speak to those that are in need of breaking through the crowd and stop asking permission to get to Jesus. And Lord, with great compassion, Lord, I spoke to a woman this week that's just so beaten down. Lord Jesus, there's some folks that need you to go to them. And right there where they're sitting, it's couches and chairs and wherever they're at, I just speak and pray over them. Lord Jesus, the great lever of 99 to find the one, I pray you would go rescue. Go rescue them. And Lord, I absolutely believe there's a prophetic word, a prophetic word for some women specifically, Talitha Ka'um. Baby girl, get up. Not a command like a shaming command, but the grace of God is released to empower you to do what he's commanding you to do. It's not a demand that you reach down for extra. It's, it's a command that releases the grace of God to begin to bring fresh life into your body. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus' dead body from the grave dwells in you. Now, I renounce the spirit of defeat off every person. I renounce the accusing case builder against God off of every person in the name of Jesus. And I speak freedom to the people of God healing to the people of God, strength to the people of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things and speak them. Amen. 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 Gang, we love you guys. Praying that you guys have a great, great, great day. And uh, again, just stay tuned and we will, we will keep you abreast of what the plans are as we go through this, this time. But just know we win and you win. All right, we got this. God bless. We'll see you later. Thanks for listening to this week's sermon. Find more of our podcasts on iTunes or in our audio library at thecrossing.cc.